Well, this is a guy's new to me 1984 Dodge D100 Custom. I found it on the fake book marketplace. I bought it sight unseen and all that I know about the rig is it doesn't run. It's been off the road for at least a decade and what's really cool and makes this unique, it's a documented one owner truck. I actually for once have the paperwork, believe it or not. I'm gonna try to get this thing fired back up, jam it on the road and drive it from Northern Tennessee to Southern Tennessee. Should be fine. Nope, ooh, it's crooked. Fixed it. So I think a guy has finally stumbled across a sweetheart here. This is a 92,000 mile truck and for once, the receipts and paperwork aren't lost. I actually have the build sheet, the original window sticker, the purchase paperwork, the owner's manual, the warranty cards and information, all the way down to the new tire stuff and things and there's more and receipts, except I forgot it all back home in the barn. But if we make it home, I'll be sure to show you guys all that stuff. It makes this really cool that it's tied to this vehicle. You just don't see that a lot anymore. I don't know, this looks a little rougher in person. I don't remember all the rust in the wheel wells, but other than that, it's solid. <laughs> you could tell it sat outside for many, 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 many moons and it's got a couple whiskey dents up front. Guy I got it from said it was a going to town rig and then it slowly merged into going to the farm, going to the pasture rig, as all trucks do and should, quite honestly. So let's walk around this thing. We'll start in the bed, see if there's any parts back there, jump in the cab, and then we'll pop the power barn here, see what we're working with. I don't have any tires or nothing. I've got a toolbox, a couple parts, and a jack. We're gonna see if we can get this thing going. There's a lot of bumblebees around here. Is that what I'm hearing? Tailgate's missing. That's probably honestly the worst part. I'll have to try to dig one of these up. The bed is in not terrible condition. I mean, there's no huge heavy dents. It's obviously had stuff slid in and out like all trucks, but you can really tell when a truck is warmed over when there's big, huge dents in here. Wheel wells ain't beat in, there's no rust and the seams or gaps around any of that. Still see some of the caulking. Pretty nice. Must have sat under, well, I guess that's probably all these needles, but. Any hoose, oh, oh. This tail light was broken somehow. That's too bad. We're missing an LP, we didn't got one. That's okay, had a truck ball in it at some point. Who knows what they were hauling. These have like a five, 600 pound ton weight maximum. Typically, the bed sides, this one seems pretty solid. No huge dents. It's got a cold snack window in it. That's definitely approved. That bedside looks equally as gooderest as this side. No huge dents or big body damage. I bet this truck was really pretty back in the day. I can't tell if this was a tan or if it was gold. Yeah, it was kind of a tan color. Be a nice combo. Do have a little bit of rust. A little weight reduction. That's just fine. This is holding some wind, thankfully, because I ain't got any tires. Oh, wow. Okay. I may have to get on the horn. And uh, looks like this was rolled back or something figure out some tires. I don't know if that's gonna make it all the way home, but we might just have to see. Exhaust later over here. We ain't got a chrome tip, but that's okay. All right. This side looks equally as weight reduced. Well, maybe a little more actually. Yeah, this one's slightly advanced on this side. Vivas, Las Vegas.
Beep. I remember these tires. They were kind of the hot ticket a while back. This truck, I was told, should have a plastic fuel tank. That looks plastic. That is great for us. Also, this cable digging into the earth is the uh, e-brake cable. So that's good. But the plastic fuel tank should really help us get home. If you've been watching the show for a while now, capacity when it comes to fuel or anything combustible is key. It's paramount in these journeys now. Obviously, I've thrown fuel tanks on the floor and the passenger seat and trunk and back seat and roof and hood and bumper and back bumper and drug it behind. But it's just nicer having 10, 15, 20 gallons on board the rig and it's not yelling, pull me over. You know what I mean? It just makes the trip go a lot easier and faster. In this case, being plastic, we shouldn't have a bunch of rust and rot in there. Uh, and plug up the fuel filter, the fuel pump, and the fuel make it happen or under the hood there, which I'm excited to see what's under that thing. Big block? Nope. Extremely unlikely. Cab's in good shape. Hasn't had any hay bales dropped on the roof. We might catch this just in time before this starts rotting out. Surface rust there. Cab corner's in great shape. Rocker's in great shape. Missing an emblem. No big deal. Got some weight reduction there. A couple whiskey dents here, but the guy fixed it. Don't worry about it. What is your problem? Settle down! Didn't work. He fixed it, so we're fine. That really did just split. They call these tin grills, I guess? Or that's a rumor? I don't know. That's auto adjusting as your speed picks up. See? That's a pretty neat feature. Hood appears to be a hood. So that's, that's pretty good. This is still here. That's neat. anti thiefism or something. I don't know, maybe when you go fast enough it I'm not really sure what's going on there. Missing the antenna, which is devastating. It means the radio probably doesn't work. That's always nice traveling as well. Same weight reduction. All the fenders got it basically. We got different tires up here. Some mud grabbers, generalises, but looks slightly in better condition. 100 badge custom, but the ram is missing on this one too. The store's in great shape. Really nice looking rocker over here too. Look at that. I'll be dipped. This cab corner is in even better shape. So we've got a pretty solid rig here to be honest and there's not a head or exhaust manifold or intake manifold or gaskets or something like that laying in the bed of the truck, which is really good news. Kind of gives us an idea of what's going on under the hood. Let's go ahead and jump in the cab of this thing and check out the interior. Yep, yeah. Oh. It smells like a wet crayon box full of mud. It's not bad. I gotta be honest. I don't see any evidence of mice right off the get-go. Oh, that's really cool. I have to show you that. Uh-oh. 74,000 oil filtrates. Probably means they weren't building oil pressure. That's fine. Door panels in great shape. 92,716 miles. That's pretty. We got ignition sticks! Finally. Let's go. Here we go now. Dead battery. We got a. Whoa. Okay. That's sloppier than a. High school sloppy Joe, but sounds like it's shifting. Four speed. That's pretty sweet. A lot of these were the column shift, auto magicals, but I love how basic and simple the Dodges were. They just said, hey, the truck goes down the road. What else do you want from us? Elegant, some would say. It's really nice. The dash isn't all busted out of it, if you can believe that. Don't these have the dash delete usually? 
I don't know what I'm looking at. I'll get you in there so you can see closer. This truck is really clean actually for its age. Look at the door seams. These are normally just rotted on all makes, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, you name it. Looks really nice. Huh, pretty cool. Seats, basically perfect. Not even a rip in it. Door panels look great. Don't worry about that. Guy worked. I like seeing that. He had gloves on, you can tell. So it definitely was a farm truck. But look at this dash. Simple, basic, functional. 92,716 miles. Lights, wiper, no radio. So this was ordered with some special stuff. They deleted on a lot of things. Rubber floor mat. You can tell here. It's got miles, but not a lot. Weird boot wear on the clutch. Here and here. Hmm. Interesting. This is faded out, but still there. Hopefully it shifts and everything. Dash is gorgeous. This is going to clean up so nice. Look at that. Oil filtrates. Check this out, though. Got the cowboy saddlebags. I wonder if there's anything in here. Nope. I believe you could slide something all the way in there. It's made of metal and wood. That's very cool. I'll be. Let's open that up, get some fresh air in here. Look how nice the seat looks. What a time capsule. Oh, this will clean up. Belts will clean up. Very cool. Here's the tag. So it was made late of 83. That's why it's in 84. Thankfully, they put it's a truck on here. So we're not confused about that. It's had some repair work done. Did I work on this? I must have. I just forgot. I am not going to hit that pedal. I will check this one out. Oh yeah, I don't know if it's doing anything, but there's a spring hooked up anyway. That's gonna be really good down the highway. Air conditioning, where'd the slider go? There it is. The knob's broken, I think. Let's get over in the mitten box, see what we got. Hmm. That's interesting. That door panel is really faded. This one's not. So the truck... Well, I guess that makes sense. It's facing north. West? West? Sun rays? I don't know. Okay? I'm not good with the Scientology topographicals. I don't think any of that has anything to do with sun direction. Anyway, engineered ram tough. Okay? All right. I'm CRC trigger happy. Ooh, fuel filter. Oh, this is the goofy return one. You can actually put these in line for hot rods if you're getting vapor lock or heat soak issues. You can uh, stub a line off there and send her back to the tank. We got a flasher, some hose clamp later, speaker wire. Hold! That's basically it for that. Oh, found the motel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Hello, anybody home? We'll come back later. I'm gonna have to get the mouse sucker in there. This is nice. We've got no catches. Let's leave it there. Seats are actually bolted in. This might be one of the nicest trucks that I own. And I'm being serious. This is a nice, nice rig. Let's jump under the hood and see what's going on in the power barn. Yep, yep. There we go. 
Oh, the Leaning Tower of Power. Sweet, we got a slant six and a four speed. That's pretty, what does this say? Electronic fuel control system. I don't like that. Looks like it's had a water pump at some point. Whoa, what is this? Put your luggage in there, I guess. I don't know. It's had a fuel, okay, so the other fuel filter he saved was his old one. Got a can of beans down here. Mice have eaten everything. It's full of stuff. Uh, Premier Top Cord Belt, 1987. Okay, we've got completage, it looks like. We got something to work with. That's good, I'll get you in here so you can look. Oh, maybe, yep. New digital ignition box. By the way, I believe the tin grill actually ended in like 79 or 80. I don't know for sure. I'm not an expert on these. I've only owned half a dozen, but they still have, you know, the tin surround. They just don't have the park lights here and all that other stuff. So here's the Slant 6. What a machine. Legendary. So good they put them in swathers and things like that. Spray coops. It's pretty neat. Dusters performance. I don't... Oh, okay. We'll pretend that's not happening. Plastic. Everything went to plastic in the 80s, didn't it? It seems like. That's wild. This goes all the way. Okay. That's, you know, engineering. Made in Korea. That's fine. Should last, probably not. See this? We could probably guess that it's had a water pump at some time, so that's good. Save me time there. It's had a fuel fill tray at some point, and I believe that's been replaced. You could tell because of the way that it is. Also, see how that's the original hardware? This has a slot. This one's falling out. And then this is just, don't worry about the insides melting and running down the firewall. You don't need all of them, okay? Things used to go here. Something went there. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Made in Canada. So, a bunch of just stuff. I thought I was seeing a bunch of mouse. Some of it right here, the headlight wiring. That's definitely been chewed on, but not terribly bad otherwise, now that I'm really staring at it. Got some sticks in here. It's all, it's all there. Ignition coil looks a ridge. Fuel pump hasn't been touched. Lots of moisture on the lightning whirler. Probably gonna have to take a look at that or address it. Let's see what's going on. That's got a little leak off the side. Hoses, this one's pliable. That one's hard as a rock, so this one's been replaced at some point. Wiring has been expertly repaired a timer six. It's had exhaust at some point. Heat riser is missing. So, I mean, it's been maintenanced and upkept. And boy, they must have been jumping through the pasture. They added a strap on here to this automotive battery. This is busted off. That's fine. We'll definitely not fix that. So this is what we got, four speed and the slant six here. I guess we could start checking fluids and come up with the plan. Let's see what the water heater says. Full of nothing. Hello! Okay, that's either really good or really bad. Uh, where's the leaker outer? I can't even see that. Maybe they drained it? Probably not, that's fine. Sure. Earl, what are you telling me? I don't even see where the full indicator is. Ah, eh, it's not bad. There's no gas, there's no antifreeze in it. So that is good. Oh, I forgot about the starter deals. Okay, so let's start by seeing if this thing rotates. 
and then, which it's a slant six, these things, listen, if this is locked up, we've got one of nine on earth right now. It's gonna rotate. I probably just jinxed myself. That's fine. Then we'll move on to sparkles and fuel. Both of which I think we could manage to just cobble something together. So let me throw it in neutral first. I might just try to grab the belt, spin these over because they're like two to four compression, you know? And if that doesn't work, then I'll get the 74 foot socket it needs. I'm back, here I am. I think I'm in neutral, not really sure. The shifter kind of just goes like this. So, you know, beltage, yep, it's turning. Oh, well that's good news. That's very, very good news. Well, the engine's turning over pretty free, which is, that's, that's great. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the sparkulators out and try to fire some sort of juice in there. Like I said, I'm, I don't got a lot with me. I got a toolbox and a couple things. Normally I put some Marvel in there. I don't know what's in it, it's a mystery. But I'm trying to prevent, if we're gonna be cranking on this thing for a while, you know, checking everything over, trying to build oil pressure, trying to get it to start, then I don't want it to just be dry in there, right? It's been sitting for years and years and years. So I'll see if I can find some WD-40 or something. Plus we wanna look at the spark later, see if there's any physical damage see if anything has happened to this, why they parked it up, could have thrown a rod, could be a bad head gasket. I mean, we're just, we gotta crawl through the thing and try to figure it out. Then we'll pop the cap off and see what kind of condition all of the things that make lightning storms happen look like. Okay. Twirl McGee, twirl my bob. Okay, let's pull these sparkulators out. Boy, we got a valve cover leak on this slant six. Who would have thought if you put them at an angle and fill them full of oil that they'd leak out of the low side? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think they could have ever figured that out. Boy, these old lightning hoses, thin. <clears throat> hey, I didn't break any off. That's new. Can a guy get his belly over the fender for Pete's sake? <laughs> I always like reading on plugs on any vehicle I get. If you learn how to read these things, you could tell exactly how she was running when she was parked up without even hearing it run. True story. I've got 37 extensions now trying to reach these things. They're on the other side of the hemisphere for some reason. These are tough working on when they're in cars. Right up against the, you know, the fender well that you can't remove because it's part of the body. So when those rot, your car is just scrap. That's pretty cool. She was pretty stoich on this one. Really old out of light. Okay. Can I, can this work now? Can this? We had an old hay swather. True story. When I was a kid. And it had this engine in it. And I remember it always, always, always ran. And then once it ran or started, it would immediately go to 4,600 RPM for 14 hours straight. I think I'm gonna snap this one off in the head. Oh, that's really not feeling good. They got some moisture in them. I'm sitting all this time. I'm a little nervous I'm gonna mar up the threads here. Yep. Now we're in it. Now we are all the way in it. What did I just do? I don't know yet, let me evaluate. Can't see nothing. Oh. Just 
taking these sparkulators out, it's going to take all afternoon. Wow. I don't ever recall having a slant six with them this tight. There, now we're getting some heat in it from all the friction. Weird. These threads are fine. Pipe and hot. Huh. Well, let's see if we can snap a few more off. Okay. Mm -hmm. After these messages, we'll be right back. I don't, I don't actually have any messages. It's just for some reason that popped in my hand. Okay. And this one's loosey goosey. Yeah, one was 700 foot pounds. This one I could have taken out with my big toenail. That one has some green stuff. Hopefully not anti-freeze. Oh. Okay. And then you got to remove the alternator to get the next one. Perfect. Makes sense. Nope. Good old wobble jockey got her. Missing a hose clamp on the fuel filter right here. That seems fine. You don't need all of them. You know. One yellow trace taco cold snack. Which one am I missing? Oh, right there. Another one. The two middle ones were. I wonder if that's something to do with the intake setup to get hotter in the center. I don't know. I'm not a slant six expert. Well, yep, okay, missing some vacuum lines, don't need them, let's just, let's just look under here, I don't know what we got going on, yep, oh, we really do have digitals, why is that happening? Okay. Sure. I don't know that we need that. Spark air fuel. Oh, the whole carburetor is coming off of the engine. That explains why a few of these were really lean. She was sucking wind. This thing must have missed and banged and shuddered and shaked, just like Elvis on a Friday. You know what I mean? This wire is bare. Is that ground? Good. I'll get you in here. Get your head in here and look. Come over here. So after I got this thing off that has a, I don't know what that is. It's an extension cord or something plugged into a diaphragm. I axiomagically pulled on this. I don't, I don't think it's supposed to do that. You know what I mean? And I don't have a rebuild kit. So I think we're pulling that whole thing off and we're gonna have to hook our peepers into it. There's probably screws that go this way uh, from the base into the body that hold that all together and that gasket is probably shot, which I don't have and that's fine. Over here, we got lean, stoich, fine, sure. This one was stuck in the head. One of these had some green crystals. That almost looks like she's burning a little coolant, if you were to ask me. And you don't have to, but I'm looking right at it, okay? So, I was going to clean these up. I brought some sandpaper and toss them back in, but no. Those are, these are pretty well junk. Now, normally, 
these older plugs like this, if they're not the iridium or the titanium or the laserum or the iphoneum tips, these will outlive you. Hit them with some sandpaper, hit them with some brake clean, jam them back in. But in this case, those are junk. And I better get to the parts store soon because it's the weekend. They're going to close early. Before I leave, I'm going to try to shoot some juice if I can angle my body in such a manner to get it in there correctly. Let that soak down a little bit, and I guess while I'm at the parts store, I'll see if they have something. Otherwise, I'll swing by Tractor Supply and maybe get some gasket maker paper stuff. Just in case we get into a pickle, here's what a vacuum hose Christmas tree looks like. Thanks, Mopar. I'm sure we really needed that. So guy is sitting here thinking, that's me. I bet you $9 to six, that's why this truck was parked. It was missing and banging and spitting and firing and hard to start and shuddering and shaking. They replaced the fuel filter. Maybe the fuel filter's clogged up. It ain't getting enough fuel. Then they re replaced the ignition module thing. Maybe it's a spark. And then they gave up and parked the thing. Well, lo and behold, it's the carburetor. Massive vacuum leak there, and it just wasn't getting the right air fuel mixture. So we'll see if we could patch that up. I did call the Hardmore store and asked if they happened to have a rebuild kit for this and every single one in town all but hung up. And by that I mean they said no, we can't get that. So we're just going to try to cobble it together. We've been there, done it before in the weeds, we'll do it again, okay. Get this thing popped off. Never see that wrench again. And then uh, we'll see if we could just clean it, use all the same parts, put it back together. I'll admit it, I got tracked sideways. Let's see if we can get some juice in these. Be good for it. take quite a bit. That one's at the top. You can hear. You've got all the devices you need on one's body to work on a vehicular. Mainly your sniffer, your ear bones if you got any left, and hopefully you got one good eye. You can make about anything run. You know what I mean? Okay, we'll let that soak. I'm gonna finish getting this fuel making happener off. 58,000 hoses and pipes and cords and all sorts of things hanging off this. Tiny little clip there on the throttle. Don't want to miss that. This is interesting. Some more automobilia archaeology. The throttle return spring was unhooked. So maybe they did discover this after all and then went, nope. That's a hard pass. I'm gonna stick this where I can lose it. Up here on the roof. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna put the wing nut next to it as an indicator. Now, we got more wires hang, okay. I guess that's done. I think get that bolt there and there. We're getting there, slowly but unsurely. Can't get a wrench in here. How are you supposed to operate it? <sighs> Some of you might be scratching your head thinking, Derek, you're kind of jumping into the fuel make it happen or pretty quick here. He hadn't even put a battery in yet. Well, listen. We can always put a starter in, we can always put a battery in. We're gonna need fuel, we're gonna need sparks, we might as well get at it. And today is a Sunday. So if I need stuff, I need to figure it out now. 
or we're going to be spending the night in this thing. So let's take this apart, see what we got. The juice is cooking. Here in a minute we can spin it with the starter and just verify. Yeah, my wrench set doesn't want to get in there. And I don't have 9 16 for my quarter drive. Hmm. Oh, that just barely got it. Okay. Once we get this figured out, we can jump into sparkles too. It's nice to have a key for once, instead of rubbing forks together or lone wolves or some other miscellaneous starter device. Okay, oh, that just, oh, okay, sure, and I was correct. There is three bolts, screws, there's hardware, that go on from the bottom, they're Phillips, and that's what holds this bottom plate on. Looks pretty clean in there, actually, the outside looks terrible. I guess I might as well just unhook this. That's doing absolutely nothing. Except flopping around. Okay. So I think I'm going to finish taking it off on our workbench back there and just make sure that gasket isn't ruined. There's a pretty good chance that there's a lot of backfiring going on, which will blow a gasket out quicker than you could blink one eye after the next. And I ain't kidding you either. Let's head back here. Look out, excuse me. Let's give her a little rinse here. I should have brought more juice. I only brought one and a half cans of cleaner. I have a last minute deal here. I'm trying to sneak this in real quick. If the gasket looks fine, we'll probably just throw it all back together and not even really dig too far into this since I don't have a kit and we know what the issue is. This is why it would not be functioning. If we didn't know, then we'd tear all the way in and look at the needle and seat and everything else, but we can also test that with a straw, which that one's missing. That one's missing. Do any of you have a carb cleaner with the straw left on it? Write that one down. It should probably go on my headstone, actually. Does anyone have a straw? Question mark, question mark. I don't think my wife would appreciate that though. Okay, accelerator pump arm, disengaged. I'll be dipped. I don't believe it, but I'm looking right at it. Gasket is fine. We just got really, really, really lucky. Well, we can see here, thankfully, that gasket is wholly intact. I hit her with some juice just to soften it up a little bit. And I think we could just throw this back together, tighten her up real tight and just pretend it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Just gotta listen for the elbow pop. There it is. That's 12 foot pounds and the big one is right there. That's 22 foot pounds. Brand new, lost the receipt. It's in a shoebox in the basement. I'll mail it to you. That's what kind of rebuild we got right here. Wow, she's pretty, pretty gross actually. I have a feeling the grass might not be as green over here. 
come later this summer. Nothing to do with me. It's these trees and the shade. You know, that's what that's what I was saying. While the fuel make it happener is laying up in the parts cleaner, also known as the dirt right behind you there. Let's go ahead and throw a lightning cube in here. Twist on this. We got wide open induction right now. And there's nothing on the other end holding up these pistons just flopping around from the torque twister there. We'll spin this over a few revolutions, see if anything happens. And uh, we might even accidentally build a little bit of oil pressure, which would be nice. Getting ready for trying to fire it up here for the first time in many, many years. I'm sure we'll eventually change the oil here. But before it lights off, it does not hurt to spin these over for a little bit and just get her on the way to building some pressure so it doesn't fire in it. My 55 Chevy is like that. It starts so good, you breathe on the key and it's right now. But then it clanks for 10 seconds until it builds oil pressure, it builds really good oil pressure, but you just kind of go, Oh, there it is. <laughs> Whew. You know what I mean? Let's see. These are never really half inch or metric. It's some, I don't know if it's like an Ecuador size or something, but it's unique, is what I'm trying to say on the battery post. <whistles> da -da -da. Come off of here. We'll probably be vice gripping that one on. Hip, hip, yeah. Okay. Routed tray. Looks fine. Get a new one. Super start. We started. Super. Ka-chow. No, that's, that was terrible. This one's got a go handle. You guys knew that. That's why I got it. Let's put the caps on this one so it looks like a really good core return. We'll do a fire test. Nothing clicking, nothing buzzing. Whoop. There was something. Relay. Oh, this guy here. Now we just wait for a few minutes. If we're lucky, something will start smoldering and then burn this truck down. If we're not lucky, everything will be fine and we won't have any electrical fires. Mice chew things, things get shorted. You know what I'm saying. Things of that nature. Cucumber salad sounds really good right now. You know what I'm talking about? With some onion. Whew. Oh, we got buzzerage immediately. Wow. I don't think I've ever had that. Seat belt lights on, hard to see. It says it's got lots of gas. Oh man, hopefully that's halfway good. No, it's gonna be terrible. Oil lights on, wow, this is, she's gonna handle really good. Wipers, we got both blades, I don't wanna scratch the glass. The glass is perfect. Nothing, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, that works. All right, let's make sure we're clear under the engine bay before I twist on this. Yeah. That should ride. I may leave this plumbed in just to see if the fuel pump is going to pump. And might just drop right down the hole and prime it up. Who knows? Now we'll just crank it for a second. We're fixing to get a beautiful sunset here. Got a late start today. I think we're still in neutral when I was spinning it overhand, right? Don't bring thunder, just get some clouds in the sky. I heard snapping. Is it getting spark? It's jumping from the... No, because I pulled the coil wire off. What was that about? 
Something's hitting something. It just pumped fuel. Get out of town. Oh, I mean, you can come back. I'm just saying fuel pump works and it really does have gas from 1927. I wish you guys could smell this. It is so varnishy. It smells like deck stain. Perfect. Might be flammable. Nope. Okay. See, I pulled, oh, maybe that wasn't the coil wire. Do I still got the coil? The coil might be plugged in. I was either hearing spark or something tapping. Not quite sure. But we can move on to that point. Starter works, ignition works, obviously. The engine rotates freely. We're gonna have fuel. Let's move on to sparkles. Yeah, I did pull that off. Okay. So, pop this off. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's what years of sitting outside in moisture is gonna do. That's ground off to a nub. Okay, we might need some ignition work here, okay? The good news is she's already got a Wix installed down here if you just look. So we could probably even leave that. And I'm being serious. Well, never mind. We have a new one. It came with the truck. We might spin that on. So let's go ahead and tune up the cap here really quick and rotor button. And then we could test the coil and then we'll figure out lightning hoses. Yeah, this one's looking a little better than that guy. Gonna get this snapped into place and a new rotor button here. Well, come on out of there. I had never seen such a fiasco. These are clocked a certain way. Looks like this way down. Okay, still fighting this guy. Do they look the same? Yes, except one's way more gooder. Okay. Engaged. Engaged. Now what I did here on this cap to the lightning whirler was I just took the number one lightning hose off and just the number one on the cap. So I can always come back and reference this when I start figuring out my firing order. I don't have to set anything to the top dead center or do any of that stuff or look at the valve train or whatever else. I just boop, put this cap on, follow the orientation of the Lightning hoses here, put them on in the same manner, bingo. We're right back to where we were, except with, you know, operating equipment. I can't get my finger between the cap and the <clears throat> oil filter. Chrysler Engineering, let's make it impossible. I got really good news. Oh, it's the only news I got the caps on. Yeah, I could have put a whole roll of bearings in the thing by now, but you know. The strap is right here on the side and it's jammed between the filter and the housing. And this is all the farther my finger goes in. So that was that was really cool. Okay, that's done. So now I think we go ahead and test the ignition coil and make sure that this whole beep boop box that has puked its guts down the firewall is still trying to do something with this. Time to test the ignition coil. I usually just try to do this if I got the time and daylight and then you could just whoosh, cross it right off the list because if we don't have spark 
we know it's not the coil and we can immediately go to something else. Now I did bring one just as a backup and we'll kind of just use it as demonstration purposes here. These are pretty neat little objects. They're filled with oil, a bunch of copper wire and contrary to popular belief, it doesn't matter which way you mount these, upside down, sideways, angled. I've seen some people say, don't, put, don't mount it this way. It's sealed unit, you're gonna be just fine. Now, these are pretty awesome. They create a magnetic field, believe it or not. There's a primary winding and a secondary winding. The primary winding wraps around the outside, which covers the secondary winding in the center, which has an iron core that comes out here, and that's where the lightning wants to shoot out. All you need to test it is just a meter. Put it on the horseshoe mode, and you're gonna go across the terminals, take your reading, and then you're gonna go to the center terminal and take that reading. Of course, this one we know is good, 9.22 right out of the box, excellent. And it depends on the brand. If you got a hot coil, you might be running 15, 18, I don't know what you got. But I can do the same down here quick. Make sure that this coil is still good, and then I can just return that one. 10.6. So actually the coil in here is a little hotter than the new one. I'll be dipped. We'll take it. They just never die it seems like. And that reading across there is fine as well. So coil is good. I can box this one back up and return it. I think we're going to go ahead and use the old lightning hoses. I'll inspect them going back on. There's really no reason to replace them if they're not cracked or busted open. If they're not leaking any lightning, we're gonna jam them back in, put the money towards fuel. Go ahead and throw some new sparklators in this bad boy here. I think we got this thing pegged. With that kind of vacuum leak, there's no way, no chance this thing was running good at all. And it probably even sounded like she was blowed up. And uh, I bet they just backed it in. Said, yep, that's, uh, that's where we're gonna leave that now. Well, we'll see if we can get her back on to the road. I'm running out of daylight. Like I say, I got here quickly. I don't have any lights or nothing with me. I'm gonna try to work quickly here. At least get it to hopefully fire tonight. And then we can come back first thing in the morning when we get some more light and finish this thing up. But we have about 40 minutes, give or take a tickle. Well, the sparkulators are back in. Guy can go ahead and start moving on to putting in the lighting hoses here. And these seem, although very old, basic seven millimeter silicon, they don't look corroded like the cap. I don't see any obvious leaks, so. Hey, if we could save the 35 bucks, let's do it. Boy, it's tight. Slant sixes are not made for Sasquatches. On the ignition side, okay? Okay, glad we agree then. This is gonna be the first engine to drive to the moon. <laughs> well, it could be, it could be the 300, could be the 292, maybe even the AMC, what is it, 49, 42? I don't know, probably not, okay. 15, 36, 24. My grandpa told me a joke, easy way to Remember, when I was like nine, you guys know the one. I can't say it, this is a family show. 15, one, five, three. 
Six. Big six in the in the end there, pulling all the weight. Where are you at? Six. There it is. Four. Boom, dialed. Coil. I don't know why this one's 74 million feet long. Here's something I was just thinking about. I dumped 13.9 gallons of gasoline into the intake. And I'm gonna hit the key. This could fire off. There is no fuel make it happen around here. And no way to control the throttle. We don't need that where we're going. And that's gonna be an easy way to see if we got spark. If it bangs and fires. If not, we'll get my little light testy doodabby out. And we'll just, we'll go from there. So you stand here and get your face in here in case flames shoot, and I'll go turn the key. Okay, this might be a little dodgy, Well, let's try it. Hip! Ah. There you go. I gotta shut it down because we're just pumping more fuel. It'd probably sit there and run. No, way too much fuel. Well, that's great news. Well, we got sparkles. Let me jam this back on, see if we can modulate our fuel and air, you know and fire this thing back up again. I can't believe that this gas is flammable, but to be honest, the fuel that's 10, 15 years old, I bet you is higher quality than today's fuel. And that's not being sarcastic. That's just the real end of in it. Yeah, okay. Boy, someone is really practicing their amendments over here. $97 in brass already. Okay. <laughs> Words and sounds. Okay. If this runs, we're still not out of the sticks yet. We don't know if it overheats. We don't know if it's got head gasket issues, if the bearings are bad, if it's gonna knock like a Jehovah Witness. We don't even know if the clutch works, the rear end's good. We don't know, we don't know nothing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We're just gonna have to take it a little bit at a time here. Well, which one goes where? This one go up here? I think PCV. That one. Oh, that's this guy. I think. There's so many hoses, I'm getting confused here. Can't believe it anymore. I don't know where this one goes. Here? For heaven's sakes. Well, here's where we're at, fellers and fellettes. We've got this thing ready to just see if it barks off now, I think. Yep, let me check, sure. We tuned up the ignition, pulled the old sparkulators out. Two were really seized in there. Got close to rounding them things off. I'm glad they came out. Replaced the cap and rotor, reused the lightning hoses. Those look fine. We tested the ignition coil. We now know we have spark. We heard it bang off just a little bit there. It's pumping some sort of Thompson water seal from a decade and a half ago. We're gonna see if that is still flammable. We fixed the carburetor without a kit. We kind of just threw that back on. It's pumping enough. It should fill that pretty quick. So I think let's go ahead and just crank on this thing and see if it's gonna make any noise.
might take a second to get enough fuel in there. But that's all right, I want to crank it a little bit more anyway for oil pressure. Every Mopar starter on the planet. Got a little gallop in it. It's not terrible. Wonder if the accelerator pump works. I think I heard it squirting fuel there. Yep. There it goes. Come on. Not making any smoke yet. Come on, come on. There it goes. Barely, oil pressure light is off. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. Yes! It's not knocking, valve train sounds good. I bet that carb is adjusted all out of whack, trying to compensate for that massive air leak plus this gas. I don't, you know, whoo. But it's sitting here idling after many, many years. Wow. I'm gonna let it run just for a minute. Why not? Oh, I do need to put some ice cube juice in it. Thanks for reminding me there. Goodness gracious. I don't know what that noise is. But I don't like it. It's rotational, whatever it is. Oof. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear it for now. Sounds very bottom end-ish. Are you hearing that? It's not the clutch. Clutch in, clutch out, doesn't make a difference. Listen to this. Fixed. I can't believe it's running off this old gas. Clucking gets better under throttle. Gonna let it sit here and run for a minute. We gotta check the head gaskets, things like that, or gasket. There's no boys in the yard. No milkshake. The sun's about down. Let's see if it fires right back up again. I don't got a temp light. I mean, I got a light, I don't got a gauge. Look at that. Ignore the starter doing, you know, typical things. I guess here in a minute we could try the clutch. That would be a big thing. At least I could probably get one tomorrow. It's not smoking. Well, it is. I take that back, but just ignore it. It's been a while, it needs to come around, okay? Let the thermostat open up, if it will. Just waiting on the thermostat to open here. Make sure it's gonna circulate. It's starting to get some heat in it. 
I got some not so good news. Listen. I think we're just going to call the bottom end loose. It's for horsepower. Something. We got some rattling. I don't know if it's a wrist pin. It doesn't sound like a rod, but it's not valve train. It's rotating assembly. So that's fine. It runs. All right. Uh, still waiting for the thermostat to open. While we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and see if the clutch works. We got forward gear and reverse gear. I think the thermostat opened. What in the world? I'm trying to see if that's compression or just... All right, let me get some more juice in quick. Hopefully this doesn't come flying right back out at me. That's what I was worried about. Okay. Well. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Just here talking with the cooling system. Letting it burp the air out. I got a nice chunk of air. I'll just put some more coolant in. I get asked sometimes, why don't you just use water when you're testing these engines? Well, a couple reasons. B, I'm lazy. I don't want to drain it. I have to put this back in later. F, this is a really good leak detector. See how green it is? If I got a weep or a leak on a water neck or water pump or something like that, it's very easy to identify where it's coming from. And yeah, you're talking, you know, five cents in tap water for, you know, 11, 12 bucks, but it can really aid you in uh, chasing down a leak. Plus, when this gets into oil, it's way more obvious. Got it burped, now it's circulating. Coming up, cross, down. Time to test the clutch before we lose our last bearing. Okay, shift clutches in. Still making that terrible noise. First gear. Oh. First gear, it wants to move, but it's not. Is it a park brake? Park brake might have been on. Let's try it again. No. I know that sound. <laughs> uh. Yep. Well. So I got good news and I got bad news. The bad news is, well, I don't think I have any bad news. The good news is the right front caliper is seized. And the left one is probably closer also on the way. Clutch works. That's great. All right, let's look at the positives. It runs, it might stay coolish, it's knocking, the brakes are seized. Well, that one sells quick. Okay. So a guy's been doing this for, I don't know, 
two decades more. And what I've seen, it doesn't matter what kind of vehicle make or model, when it comes to rubber brake lines, they all act and do the same thing. When they get old, they get constricted, just like a guy's arteries. A little bit heavy on the wobble pops and protein. You know, the eggs and the butter, you know what I'm talking about. They shrink down. Well, in brake systems, it's just a basic hydraulic system. What happens is when the brake pedal gets pushed, you are creating like 1200 PSI of pressure and that master cylinder is gonna force fluid through that constricted rubber hose into your wheel cylinder or caliper, but then what happens is there's nothing to force it back. So, boop, that caliper is seized on the rotor. That fluid cannot go this way. It can go this way. So we're gonna to have to jack the front end up get the tires off, tear apart the brakes, break some brake lines off, try to run new brake lines. I don't have a brake flare tool or a cutter or the line or the fittings or anything brake. Oh, I got brake fluid. We're good. We're good. Well, the guy is gonna go on ahead and bust these lug nuts loose. And then uh, I'd like to dip my head in here see what I'm in for, see if I can get all the parts. And I know a guy that knows a guy that has a wrecking yard in town. Might have him look at some tires. These front ones don't look too bad. They're only like 75 years old. It's the back ones that I could put my fingers through the sidewall. And it looks like the Grand Canyon all over the place. Those are a little. A little sketchy. Running out of light here. I don't know how much I can get done in terms of taking the lines off, but maybe I can at least juice them, let them soak overnight. We almost had a hubcap on it. <sighs> yeah. Ah. Wonder. Yeah. Carb cleaner. Let's see. Yep, see. Completely locked. I'm just looking, okay? Relax, I need some information first. Just the basic facts. Can you show me where it hurts? Oh, yeah, this line right here. Well, I think I'm gonna shut her down for tonight. Pick up my tools, shut the hood. I think it might rain tonight. Grab a few things in the morning. Come right back here and uh, see if we can get this Brake system operational. We have a clutch, it seems like. It was grabbing pretty good. First and reverse work. Engine, very, very questionable. Cooling system, it's circulating, but that doesn't mean much. Tires, that's enough. But we got work to do, okay? And we got, we got to drive long ways. Awesome. See you guys in the morning. morning. The Dodgy Dodge is still here. <laughs> well, we're going to jump right in and tackle these brakes. I just realized bleeding them is going to be a challenge. I am alone. I have to try to gravity bleed them or something. But I'm just going to tear in, take these soft rubber lines on. Hopefully that's the only issue and the caliper isn't froze as well. 
Gonna have to do one side at a time here. Jack stayed up overnight. That's pretty good. Guy's got the soft rubber line off. And unfortunately, it did not knock this loose, which means the caliper piston is also frozen. So, I'm gonna dig into this, figure out how to take that thing off. And I believe I do have a set that may work. Had to beat it off with a hammer. She was seized on good. This one just falls apart. And you can see that's out and stuck out. Great. That one's probably still good. Yeah, there's lots of miles left on them. Well, this spins nicely. Bearing seems to be in really good shape. So that's good. I'm not going to replace that dinner plate break. I think that's going to be just fine. Guys got that side done. Back down on the paw. Basically rinse and repeat on this side. I don't know if this one's locked too, but based on how the pads looked and everything else, Miles will get it done. Guy got her off the ground assuming this was going to be locked up too, but it was that right front. But we're still going to replace it anyway, so I'll drop this down so I can get the lugs busted off with the old knuckle remover 300 here. Yep. <clears throat> Got some earthworms. Look out, little buddy! Oh yeah, sounds great. I never got brakes or batteries ever. I think, I think I'm just gonna pretend we looked at the back ones. Yeah, okay. That sounds pretty good. These dinner plate brakes seem to stop pretty good. I gotta be honest. So maybe with just the dinner plates working, we ain't got a fuss with the drums, is what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, boy. She's locked up. Maybe coming through. I gotta get some juice on that one. I don't wanna snapalize it. Trying to get the line off the frame there without breaking it. Oh, So on this side, I can't get this fitting off without the line rolling with the fitting. I put a plier on here and everything, and I'm already in danger of potentially having damaged that line. And if I break that, then we gotta run a new one, which is gonna go under here, up to a distribution block somewhere, a proportioning valve. Don't wanna do that. So I can see fluid dripping. So there must be the ability to pass fluid on there. At least that's what we're going to say. So on this side we're going to keep the old hose, but I am going to put the new caliper and pads on. This bearing seems to be good as well. They must have put pads on this side, but not the other. Them look newer-ish than the other side, but at least we're not getting into bearings today. I shouldn't have said that out loud. I realize it now. Guy's got both sides in. Now we'll use the master cylinder to push some fluid down.
crack them and then I'm going to let it gravity bleed one side at a time. And I hope that we don't snap any lines. Okay. This is probably a 10 M&M, I'm guessing. Oh, it's 3 8 maybe. Not really. Leader is open. Now we wait. And wait. And wait. And wait some more. <laughs> there we go. And now I'm just going to wait. See how that fluid has got some color to it? Caramel. Kind of looks like black velvet. I'm going to wait until it clears up because I just poured a bunch in the master cylinder. And then we'll move to the other side. Over on the drinker side again. Let this one gravity bleed out. And then we'll check the pedal, see if the master cylinder does anything. Well, I'll be dipped. Nice firm pedal. I don't hear any hissing yet. So nothing snapped in the back. And uh, we better, better go ahead and fix these. Fixed. Guy found this block laying here by the barn, so I threw it under the tire there. Now a guy can scooch under, get this oil drained out of her. Well, I don't see any metal flakes or anything like that in it. So that's good, I guess. It's not getting into the bearing material, whatever that clanking, clamoring sound is. Or it just all went into the filter. Now for Earl's on this rig, a feller usually runs the old T4, heavy duty diesel oil. It's got about 1200 PPM in it and it's cheap. But it's 15 weight, 1540. I need something thicker in this because of how she was sounding a little sick there. So I picked up this VR1 2050 and uh, this also has a lot of vitamins and minerals these old engines like. So we're gonna go with this. If I can pour most of this on the alternator. Oh, can I get some of it in the engine? There we go. That guy's gonna thicken it up a little bit more even. Gonna use this hyperlobe. I don't know, I must have sugar in it or something. Looks like syrup, but it's got a flag on it. So that's good, I guess. Oh yeah. Hard to find straight 30 weight in parts stores anymore. That's what I would have run. And since I didn't mix that with the motor earls, that's going to take 17 days to go down. It's fine. Got her packed in there. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Sure. Guy did pick up a new air filtration unit for it. Maybe that'll make it knock less. Nope. Okay. On. Where did I put that wing nut? Is it still up on the roof? I'll be. I think we're ready to fire this thing up. See what it sounds like today. The sticker oil in it. And we should be able to move it now that the wheel isn't locked up. There we go. Overfilled, perfect. Battery going hot. Okay, it's fired up again. Bring in the thunder. Oh, starter. Oh, 
little cold blooded, ain't she? Well, it kind of runs. <laughs> What's that whirling sound now? I'm getting all sorts of new sounds out of this thing. Every time she runs. I don't know. Gonna let it warm up. While it's warming up, I'm gonna throw some wind back on the wheels here. I did not find any other tires, so I guess we're rolling with these. It's gonna have to send up a prayer. Nineteen pounds. Let's go to thirty-five. It does sound better with that thicker oil. Easier to ignore it. I got to put a hose clamp on that fill filter before I forget. These rears are the ones that make me really nervous. Boy, they're soft. Okay, let's see if it'll move and stop. Probably not. Okay, reverse. Rolling. Clutch works. Okay. Oh yeah, we got brakes for two months. Very good brakes. Must be geared high. All right. Ha! First time moving under its own power in many many years. I almost just said, let's go for a test drive, but that's kind of erroneous because I just need to get home. So the whole drive is the test drive, essentially. Let me throw uh, my garbage bag of clothes in here, my toolbox. I got a couple things laying around I got to pick up, toss it all in the dodgy dodge here, and we're just going to jam this thing on the highway. We have got a lot of miles to put down. And we're gonna make it too, ain't we? I hope so. Already forgetting where I'm packing things. I don't think I've ever used carb cleaner as glass cleaner, but it's what I got, okay? Oh yeah, that's doing nothing. Perfect. Actually, How am I gonna get this off? The stuff, whatever it is, is just stuck on here. I need like a razor blade or scotch. Not a scotch. Hmm. Scotch. Not a scotch pad. A uh, quad zero steel wool pad. What can I use here? My toolbox just so happened to have a uh, razor knife in there. There we go. It's kind of, kind of doing something. It also means whatever's on the paint here is gonna be a battle royale getting off. Might clean up really good. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. When we get home, we can pressure wash it, clean it up a little bit. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, bearing doesn't 
it's not very throwy. Sack gear. It does have really long legs. Steering's pretty loose. That's pretty typical for old trucks. The speedometer does not work, although it is squeaking and very annoying. So that's that's fine. Seems okay. Brakes. Over there, I can hear the dinner plates in the front grinding a little bit. The new pad's got a seat. You know. They're just turning the rotors, is what they're doing. Clutch feels pretty good, though. All right. Yeah. Well, you really got to kind of work the clutch to get this thing going. Second. Third. All right, well, let's keep on rolling, see if we can find some highways. And uh, I don't have headlights, so we gotta get as far as we can before dark. Hopefully we can just get all the way there, we'll see. Well, made it to a fuel station here. Gonna put some 93 in, try to water down this varnish in here. Forgot I had to come off the mountain. That was interesting. Thank goodness I went ahead and, you know, replaced the back brakes too. Front rotors are warped terribly bad, so it was all the way down, but we got her. We got her down the hill. Excited to see how good it runs with some fresh gas in the thing here. I think I might double check these lugs. I can't remember if I cranked them on or not and I never checked the rear at all. Well the guys all fueled up. It took 8.3 gallons. I don't know how many gallons these tanks have. So 93 and then 12 octane. So we're down to like 47 octane at least for the first tank and then uh, it'll just get better from there hopefully. Well, guys, been cruising down the interstate for a while. Got some miles down. Pulled over. Gonna check for leaks. Adding some more air into the tires. This thing has a terrible death wobble, like 40 to 55. It just wants. It feels like the front of the truck's gonna rip off. And at first, I thought it was just flat spots of the tires because they sat for 79 bajillion years, but that is not the case. So. I don't know, we'll just have to stay above that speed and below that speed. Thankfully we got 19 horsepower so I can blaze right through that kind of area where I get the wobble, you know. Well let's look this thing over, looks like the grill's about to cave in too. So that's, that's kind of interesting. I don't know what, whoop, the grill's broke right there. Um, okay. So I guess I'll just take this out, <clears throat> put it in the back. That's the oil that I spilt. Doesn't seem to be overheating yet, which is great because you got to have this thing to the mat the whole time to even attempt to keep up with traffic. It smells like burning all of that stuff in the cab, which is really delightful. You know, I don't know what was going on with this to cause it to do that, but I guess we get more wind now without the teeth in the mouth, see? So that'll be good. Well, I'm going to top this thing off again. Grab a bite to eat here. I haven't eaten all day. And 
and uh, we'll just jam it back on the highway. Keep on cruising. Remember those tires I was kind of worried about? <laughs> well, I think we just lost one. Well, if I can get this one fixed, the other one's going to be right behind it. So I called my buddy Donnie. He lives, I don't know, yonder, probably about 45 minutes or something. He said he might have some trailer tires that could fit. So what I'm gonna do is get off this exit ramp. I'm gonna crawl it up into, it looks like an abandoned gas station or something up there. And uh, wait for him and while I'm waiting, I'm gonna figure out if I can wire the headlights up because we're gonna be here till dark. And I was trying to avoid doing that because I'm lazy, but I'm gonna need them at this point. Hopefully they're good. I should check them quick actually if he's coming out and I can have them bring some balls. So let's hurry up and get this up here. I'm not too worried about this wheel. He said he's got one. Yeah, it's thicker, nice and easy. This might be our first flap. Can't be. Well, this is why I normally ship tires to the vehicles I'm working on or bring them with me because you can get in a pickle when it comes to tires especially getting them mounted uh, or anything like that oh this guy blew a tire right there too <laughs> yeah this will be a lot better working up here on flat ground and yeah, off that dangerous off ramp Okay, let's get the hood popped and uh, see if we can hot wire these. Hopefully at least one works. I think a guy could just run a wire from here right to here. It's already, I don't know if it's been chewed or what, but wrap that up and it should back feed, hopefully. The headlight switch does operate, but the headlights don't come on. It just turns the, well, I'll just show you. Oh, I got. Oh, yeah, it is on. It's just very. Yeah. And I think I've only got one tail light. Yeah. The bulb looks good ish. Take all the wires, maybe. These little things are handy. I got the alligators boop, boop, on both ends. Now we can just uh, connect this. Oh, sparks. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Hey, we got both. Well, that's good. Now I can focus on seeing if I can keep this one to stay in. So this can just ride in here, like so, and we'll just clip that on when we need it. So that's fixed at least. Laid under the back of the truck here to jack it up and realized I never even looked under here. Look what I found. All being dipped. The original spare. Never been used. Sitting up in here. But this tire is still 
significantly rotten and it's starting to separate so that doesn't resolve that issue this is the captain's side uh, pretty rough let's hold that back there for now some sort of weird looking mosquito Okay, my buddy's on the way. He's got two trailer tires. He said they are dry rotted, like rotted rotted. Perfect, they're free. So we'll throw those on, and now we know we have a spare that's flat underneath the truck, so we're fine. We blow one, put that on, blow the other one, put the one I just took off, the Viva that's rotted, put that on, and uh, we've got, I think, still another 100, 10 miles, 105 miles. I might just run back roads, so if we blow another one, we're not stuck on the side of the interstate. Um, let's check out this uh, band of gas station here. You know what I mean? Mazel. Here's the big, you know, for the fuel tanks. That one's kind of cracked, I'm sure they're empty been fully decommissioned maybe not because they got oh yeah they're just that's where you fill them up bling bling oh wow yeah Cooler there, must have been one there, probably the, or maybe the countertop. Bathroom tile, looks like a his and hers. Got one here, door, that would have been a door, that would have been a door. These pipes have seen some things, I'll tell you that. This must have been a closet or something. Maybe. Huh. Back door. And we had the big diesel pumps. Cool. Plenty of space to sleep tonight if we just decide to stay. Donnie made it! He's here. Look what he brought. We got a big old trailer tire. Sure. That thing's hard as a rock. I ain't gonna pop. And this one's like a brand new spare or something. Good ride. I like that they're both different sizes, so we get the rear end nice and hot. And um, it should get us home though. So we'll pop these on quick. He even brought a ratchet because, you know, I was doing it that way. Get these on quick, we're losing daylight here. Donnie saved the day. Okay, the white spokes look pretty cool on here. All right, let's hit the road. Uh, we got maybe half hour of daylight left and then we'll hot wire our headlights and keep on going. This lady came in overheating, helped her out, got her down to the Dollar General to get some water for that rig and uh, got the fan going. So it's been an interesting evening. Well, a guy went ahead and juiced the lights up now, so I don't have to stop in a few minutes to do that. So now we got to pray that this weird engine noise stays inside of the engine. It doesn't come out. And also, we need to say a prayer for this rear end, because now one tire is spinning faster than the other one, which is going to be terrible for this open rear, but it's what we got. If the rear end gets to making a bunch of noise, we can always take the front tires off and put them on the back. But then it's going to pull the steering wheel really hard and want to, you know, pull the truck all over the place. So we're just going to go with it like this for a while and uh, see what happens.
Well, good morning. Guys hiding under the carport here. We got a severe storm coming in, sprinkles and some wind and stuff right now, but late last night, I crawled in with the Dodgy Dodge. It made it after sitting parked for years and years off the road, non-running. We woke this thing up and jammed it right on the highway, and it did pretty good. It runs actually not bad. It didn't get hot and never lost oil pressure. It got phenomenal fuel mileage. It did all the things that the leaning uh, tower of powers do, besides make power, you know? And it needs work, but it's nothing major. It's just an old farm truck and being parked up for years. That's just what happens to them. So should we keep this thing around, clean it up a little bit more, put some tires and wheels on it maybe? The interior is gorgeous on this. And then send it down. I don't need another farm truck. I got one sitting right here, but we could clean this up and send it on to someone else that could take care of it and continue the restoration with the thing but thanks guys for watching appreciate you very very much and we'll see you very soon